Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at displacement maps in Blender and how to apply them to a vertex group as you see here or to the whole model. Now displacement map is different from such thing as a bump map or a normal map in that you're displacing the physical model itself rather than displacing a texture. Therefore when you 3D print this you will see this texture actually only 3D print. If this was something like a normal map or a bump map then this texture won't be available once you've printed. We later look at STL files as well so we're looking at CAD programs such as FreeCAD and using the STL file exported from there or even a face exported from there and importing that into Blender to create a displacement map for such things as grips and knurling. I know you can do that in those CAD programs. You may want a more complex knurling for your models and solid modeling is the way to go for this. So I hope you enjoy this channel and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So I'm in Blender. I'm going to show you the displacement map with a simple plane to start with before going on to STLs. I've just deleted the square from the center and also I'm going to delete the camera. So we've got a clear scene. From here we're going to add a simple plane from meshes and plane. And this is just to get an idea of how this works. So if we increase this, we've got our plane here. And I'm going to add something called a displacement map against this. So we can come up to the Z, look straight down upon it. Now a displacement map we can add by the modifiers. So we come over here and we click the object. We're in object mode and we'll click on the spanner, which is the add modifier. If we add a displacement map from the deform and displace, this will change the surface of our object. With bump maps and normal maps, it just changes the look. So that's visual. This is actually physically changing the surface. So if you print it with a bump map or a normal map on the 3D printer, you won't get that texture upon there. With a displacement map, you will. So we've added the modifier. That's add the texture by going new and then clicking on this icon on the end. Show texture in texture tab. Let's come down and we're looking for the open. This opens our textures and we can go and find a JPEG or a PNG or whatever we want to use. And I'm going to use this mesh.jpg. Now this is quite low quality, this one here. It looks like nothing has happened and that's because it hasn't. Because the plane hasn't got enough information upon there to apply the texture to. So we need to increase the information for this plane. Now you don't need to do this with STLs because they will have enough information there. But it's a thing to remember because we're going to go back to our CAD program, in this case FreeCAD, and understand how much information we need to add to that model to allow for such things as this displacement map. So let's click on the spanner icon and add a modifier. Now I'm adding information and I'm going to come down and we're looking along this generate and we're looking for something called subdivision surface. The surface will change. We're adding more information to this. Now I'm going to increase the levels up to about four for now. This rounds this off, but we still only got one face upon here. Now as well as the subdivision surface, we're going to add some faces to here, but let's see what's happened. At the moment, our subdivision surface, well, it's not in the right place. It's actually below our displacement modifier. Let's bring this out so we can see what's happening. So I'm going to drag this above and you'll see a change. Notice the change has happened. Let's angle this to see what's happened. It's actually starting to take effect, but it just doesn't look right. Even if I increase the strength of this, 
we can see we're having some problems here. And even if I increase the levels, we've still got some issues. Let's zoom in to see this properly. So it started to displace, but it's still not right. Now this is because of UV mapping. So we've got a texture, but it's not mapped correctly to the coordinates of our model. And we can see that our coordinates are local at the moment. If we drop this down, we can see we've got a UV in here. But before we use this UV, we need to unwrap that surface. Now before we do that, we're going to add some more faces to that surface as well, because I can show you how to create a vertex group so we can apply the texture to parts of the model rather than just the whole face itself. So let's add some more faces to here. Come over to the object mode and drop this down to edit mode. We've now got this shape. We're now in edit mode and the face has been selected for us. So make sure that we got face selection here. Selection mode of face. And we'll just click on that face. Now I need to right click and click on subdivide. And we're going to increase the amount of cuts like so. So we've got all those increased there. What you can do is click off and then drag and select all those again and right click and subdivide once more and we can increase this up to whatever we want. Increase that to two and that's good. I clicked off and we've got our faces here so I could add the texture just to this lot or this lot etc and we'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to click on Z and highlight all of these like so all of those faces. Now we're going to unwrap by coming up to the UV editing. So we've got that there. Next Let's pull this over a bit so we can get to the items on this side. And I'm going to click UV and Smart UV Project and hit OK. So we've got our Smart UV Project now. And I can, from here, select the faces that I want to apply to the UV map. So I've added all those faces there. Let's come back over to the modeling and then drop back into object mode. Zoom in and reposition ourselves. You can see what's happened. We have a change. We're starting to get the hexagon pattern come out. Now look at the coordinates here on the modifier for the displacement and drop this down to UV. We're now getting the UV map applied to our texture and we can change the strength so we'll bring the strength down and I've gone into minus figures there so what I'm going to do is just click on that and hit zero and click off and I can tweak this up and you can see that we've got that mesh added to that and we can see now that's been added. It's nice and clean in there. You can see if, when I zoom in, we've got these deformations here. This is just the JPEG that I'm using. It's low quality JPEG. But we've got, if we look to the side, you can see that we've got that texture there, which is exactly what we want. Now, remember what I was saying about we can add this to just a number of faces or a number of vertices. To do that, we need to build something called a vertex group. This is quite easy. So I'm going to click on Z again. So I'm looking straight upon the top of this object. And I'm going to come into the edit mode. To create a vertex group, I'm just going to click off. And I'm going to select some of the vertices. So we've got face selection at the moment. That's fine. So we can select some of those, some of those. Holding down the shift and I'll select some of them. We can use the different selection modes. So for instance, the lasso selection or the circle selection. And we'll just draw in some of 
the vertices there. Once I'm happy, come up to the, well, we need to hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and come up to vertex and we drop down and you'll see vertex groups and assign to new group. What happened is that's assigned to a vertex group. And if I bring this out and look at the mid displacement, you'll see this vertex group here. Before we apply that, let's go over to object mode. Where the vertex group is, let's click on it. And you can see a group in there. If I click on that now, you see we've added that texture just to that group. So we can bring this over and zoom in and you can see how that texture has been applied to there. So this is the kind of thing that you'll do with an STL file. You'll prepare the STL file in your CAD program, export it out to Blender and then pick a vertex group to apply this displacement map to. Obviously using the UV unwrap as well. And what we'll do, we'll show you how to do that in part two of this video. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel.